I'm running out of time. So I push this button? Mm -hmm. oh, it's already pushed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Live from RV Falcor in the middle of the Gulf of California. We are a new team of biologists that have just boarded the ship two days ago in La Paz, Mexico, and we are now exploring the southern Pescadero Basin. We are at a thousand meters depth here, looking at this beautiful jellyfish. We've got J-Rod and Chris with us as pilots and John and Carl as our marine technicians. So we have a, a full group here in the control room. We are headed to the seafloor at 3,650 meters depth to explore hydrothermal vents in this basin. We had two other science legs ahead of ours. The first leg was responsible for large scale tectonics and doing some multi-beam mapping. And then the second leg, we had some volcanologists, geophysicists, and geochemists sampling the hydrothermal vents. So we will come back to you when we hit the seafloor and uh, talk more about our objectives. Yeah, if they, and if they ask any questions, I can answer. Great. Sean, are you going to introduce yourself? Oh. I, <laughs> I am Dr. Shauna Gofredi, biologist at Occidental College, and we will introduce you to some of the other scientists on board. There are six of us uh, when, we, when they all funnel into the control room a little bit later. The National Flower of Mexico. Yes. I can give you options if you'd like those. Okay, yeah, I would like options. Perfectly. Is it a poinsettia, a poppy, a passion flower, or a dahlia? Poinsettia. Okay. 
say it. I would agree with you on that one. Sorry, guys. For some reason, thank you. Our Wi Fi. This is a Tanakhra in Kaliki, I think. The small one, we've seen some massive ones. Too. You have seen yeah. some large ones? Yeah. Also Hawaii. Yeah. And they disappear. It's just going back to your own house. Oh, cool. Well, um, script was created in Sumer and started with Ronde in Sanskrit. Elamite, hieroglyphics, Kiel. Sanskrit. Sumerians used Kiel form with green paste writing implements and wet tablets. That one you're talking about. Farmers pioneered the use of which animal for plowing. 
ox, the rabbit, the horse, the dog. Ox. Ox is a two legs. Rabbit is a two legs. Ten thousand. Rabbit power. <laughs> what early civilization flourished on the island of Crete around 2000 BCE? Mesopians, Trojans, Zenoan, or Phoenicians? Trojans were on present day Turkey. The nations were also a folks who were on the day. Yeah, Sumer, we know. 50 50 of Manoa was correct. Around 2800 BCE, Babylonians and fats and ashes to create what I Bandages, so Fat, fats. fats and ashes. Okay. If you remember, Fight Club. Make sure you have so. this. So. Thank you, Tyler Dirk. Bye. Chinese dynasty pioneered bronze work around 1600 BC. Shang, the Ming, the Tang, the Han. Tang. Sure. The Shang. Of course, you go to the wrong one. All right. We didn't end well on that. We were doing great.
you're going down to 3,650 3, liters. things coming in. Those are the things that live inside the Just on that one tab. I'm moving. 
Christ. Besides Pompeii, which ancient Titan city was also destroyed by Mount Vesuvius.
also be the, so is this also the same thing with the number of control? Yeah. 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 Oh, so our sample number was wrong? Yeah. Seven. Our sample ID? Yeah. 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 is correct. Yeah. 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 I know Willie like you know, a lot more songs than I do. Yeah, he wrote a lot more. I mean, he wrote a lot. I didn't realize he was like, like a Chris Staten kind of thing. He wrote a lot of music. Yeah, he was a songwriter before he had big as well. Chris Christopher's is a songwriter. I mean, I like this format. Could, could some like critical information would be that long depth?
Good day, mate. Good day. Stones are from Scotland. It's an odd point of pride for us. <laughs> odd. I like I haven't seen Russell in like six or seven months. Is that about right? Um, the US in Australia? That was the last person. We live for 75 years. I do not think that would be probably. Think of the anthropods? Anthropods aren't those? You know the ones that that alien was uh, inspired from? Yeah. Is that anthropods? The ones that live inside the little salt chain? What's that? There's a toy wasp. Did I miss anything, though? Not that one. That's a type of anthropod, though, right? Yeah. It's like It's a hyperlid amphipod. 
think this is a dead sea cucumber. I'll yep. just get yeah, yeah. it real quick. Disappear. If they float to the surface when they die. That's all you're talking about. The uh, uh, squat lobster up so high. I was like, ooh, we don't want to see both. Last time we had an apple too high. So. Deed. What's the next line, John? Oh, there's another one. Lisa, whatever these are. Aren't these a type of anthropod? Pretty sure they are. It's not that, not the really cool, clear one, but it's a different kind. The one that I called a sea spider, mistakenly. Uh, a couple of dies ago. This is what we saw before. Yeah, that looks like it's going to attack us. Or it's dead. It's definitely not dead. Of course, you get things to see if you go here and try to help. That strikes. Right, let's see if I can get it to swim again, because it was really cool when it did that earlier. Isopod. Isopod? So not anthropod. Isopod. Mm. Slipping. Got the pod right. All right. Got the pod all right. All right. Come on. Start swimming. I gotta go, little guy. There you go. There you go. Come on. Gotcha. <laughs> and I gotta leave you, buddy. Size is tiny. Africa is eight o'clock. Oh. Which hemisphere? At where they look. He's still on eight o'clock, right? Buddy, mm. Africa is located in which hemisphere? Africa. Yeah. Southern hemisphere. Southern hemisphere. What's your answer? Oh wait, no. Well, you mm. also say the eastern hemisphere. Okay. You say southern and eastern, or is it an option? Not southern. Uh, well, Morocco is at like forty-five. Mm. It's all four. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> it's all the only place is all four. I was gonna chance with it for a little more. Kind of a trick question. Hello, Z. What are the two main tributaries of the Nile River? Is it the Yangtze and the Yellow? Is it the Blue and the White Nile? Is it the South and the East Nile? Is it the Zambezi River? And Tigers. The Limpopo River. Tigers and Euphrates. Blue and White. The Blue and White. Oh, 
I was cheating using YouTube. What landmark is located near the southern tip of Africa? Landmark? Yeah. You got around it. Corn? Cape Horn? Cape Horn? No, Cape Horn is it's South America. Oh, okay. Cape Horn is Africa. There's the Horn of Africa on the east, oh, northeast, right. and the... And the Cape of Good Hope Cape actually Good isn't the southernmost port portion of uh, Africa. It's one to the east. Good day. Good day. Located in Uganda and Tanzania, what is the largest lake in Africa? You guys are seeing all sorts of fun stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. Victoria Falls is located on the border of Zambia and what other country? Uh, Kenya. Is it Zimbabwe, Southern Africa, Morocco, or Cameroon? Zimbabwe. And did you know that was named after our chief scientist? Yeah. Z? Victoria Falls. Oh, okay. okay. Really? Yeah. Sure enough. It's the most famous, named after the most famous Victoria I can think of. <laughs> Zimbabwe. What are you? What are you out here? Are you well snot? Well snot it is. No, but that looks like a little, little cute Tina for People always like a Tina for in their life. Can't go wrong with a little Tina. Can't go wrong with a little Tina for action. That should be right about there. There he is. Which president grew up on a Tina farm in Georgia? Uh, what's the guy's name? Who's also Mr. President? Jimmy Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Carter. Also, an officer in the Navy is a nuclear officer. Before his film political careers, which president was a lifeguard? A lifeguard? That's all. Why Reagan? The actor? What didn't he do? Which president was related to 11 other presidents? William McKinley, FDR, James K. Polk. McKinley. Can the DRs correct? Hang on. Tino Four. Tino Four. Most important question. Team Tino Four. Which president was the University of Michigan football team MVP? Yeah. Yes. We're not doing the C bad yet. <laughs> <laughs> Morning trivia. Mm -hmm. Chris. Ford. Gerald Ford was the MVP of the 1940s home honor under Michigan football team. Why did I know that? That looks like Truman, so we're going to go Truman like that. Wow. The picture of Kate as Truman as a child, it looked just like it was Truman as an adult without the gray hair. Which president grew up in Scranton, Pennsylvania?
back on air. Oh, the, the acrylic rings? So you want to do, do you want to show you a sample yes, of these? Okay. As perfect so, as possible. Um, not not, uh, not to the micron, but so thank you. Some came up. Ooh, you're talking about the spooky video where the crab falls off the cliff. <laughs> Pretty sure that's what Jason Michigan's talking about. Remember, remember the, the, the hobo crab had the enemy on its back? Yeah, and it climbs over the edge and just. Whoa. <laughs> it seemed more dramatic because, like, it was like a really steep cliff. Like, it was like committing suicide, but oh. it was pretty cool. Sailed down gently. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sure that's what. We all have lasers, right? We saw yeah, a whole bunch of these last crews for our last leg. So, yeah. Can we lower the iris? Yep, working on it right now. Polyketo. Some it's kind also, of polyketo. Yeah. Can we put the lasers on too? So yeah, that's it's, yeah, yeah, you won't be able to see them. Too, too little. That's Here he comes, just to, uh, <laughs> it's the, 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 the scent of a polyketo. <laughs> Well spotted. Yes. Yeah. Um, that's called Flota, F L O T A. Nice job. And it's in a group called Flabula Gerardi. Do you want to stay with it for a little bit or? Uh, uh, no. Okay, because okay, you got some good images on it. Although, actually, the head of it, you got the most amazing picture there. You can see its little. Uh, yeah, yeah, I got to back off. I don't want to grab it onto my camera. That's okay. okay. I saw a grab of what you Was that frame grab or that something? It's feeding appendages, which is really cool. So I'm not interested in collecting this. We've worked on it before. Okay. But you know the ones we got up in California, the swimmer ones? Yeah, the bombers or the... The bombers, yeah. 
Have you seen any bombers this cruise? I have not yeah, seen yeah. any bombers yet. Just the, the ones that we just saw earlier, the, the other polykey. Oh, the, the Tumultuous? Yeah, the Tumultuous. Yeah. So, quite a few of those. Let me see if I can get you a better shot. If we have a chance later, we could get one of those. If you've been seeing plenty of them. Of these? Oh, yes. Yeah, plenty of these. Yeah, we've worked on a it from California. It would be worth checking if it's the same species. But the uh, bomber we got in California, that's a new species, Joe. Really? Yep. Oh, look. See the green little things coming out the front? Yeah. Those are its gills and feeding appendages, and we've never seen those before because they retract them. So that's its little head coming out that tube. That's really awesome. I gotta get going. Okay. Thank you. Do you want us? There are three. There are three copies of this the basket map. So I assume, are you going to be working with one? I'm going to have one of them. So Note taker, them. and then and then third one I thought was for you guys. Did you? All, we you have need one. To, we have our own one. Yeah. yeah. So I'm uh, printing four today. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, so I, you only need I two. I only need two. Yeah, sorry, I thought for That's you two. Totally okay, fine. just just making sure we're not missing somebody that needs this. No. Just know the gas types and majors on there are backwards, but it's not a big deal. No one wanted. Yeah. Bomber the same? No. No, they're not the same. Float is in a group yes. called so Flabellagerity. Uh, and they have this mucousy sheath around their body. And swimmer, the green bombers, are in another group called Acrosurity. They're close, uh, but they've independently evolved to become pelagic. Which one's the one that we saw that other crews where when it took off it made that? That was Tomotrus. That was Tomotrus. Yeah. The uh, flavellager and green blommers don't have luminescent mucus, which is what the Tomopterus did. Gotcha. The green blommers have little actual balls that are part of their bodies that they shed and they glow. Um, which if we ever saw one, you guys could irritate and maybe make the bombs drop and get a video of it, which would be cool.
would only give it a sample ID once you start. Because you don't want to give a sample ID when you're in the process of sampling. No, I think there would. We need to know that that's R1. You, you have a series of sample variables.
for column Q. Yeah. Um, so there's several things that don't have associated numbers, which would be the push cores and diskins. And then we decided to leave all the numbers for the quiver, second and temporary of our box, because those two are kind of numbers. I mean, even rocks could go in the world for versus the same way. So, Jerry, you can have a
I see you on the YouTube. Steve King, I see you uh, on the YouTube chat feed. Yes, we are out here. Uh, soon we will be giving you some commentary on our dive objectives for the day. We are going to be dropping into a site known as the Matterhorn, and we're all very excited to see it because the last time we were here was three years ago, and apparently it's changed a little bit. So we will come back to you in uh, maybe 100 meters depth. Shift. No, me. 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 Me
May with Shadow. Okay. And then, right. and then you and Rebecca in the afternoon. Then Or maybe Greg. showed me this morning, John, empty, um, that there is a, a bacterial map to the east of Matterhorn. Yeah. You know, you're, um, and then, and and I think the innovative so chimneys it, that he uh, was talking about are over there, too. It's south. No, those are north. You're a little, okay. Yeah, so, so to, let me draw you to the east, there's, uh, right around, there's all those dead things. Yeah. There's just a string of dead plants that go east, then we get into bacteria plant. And plant like where you are, where that spot that no, we can, no, how far east is it? Because we pass over that, I'm, I'm already east of it right uh, now. If we had an MT, it's definitely on this bathymetry. There's a photo mosaic. It's from the photo mosaic in 2018. I don't know if I can. No. 2018. So, I can do a picture. So these are 10 meter, 10 meter grids, so yeah. here's Matterhorn. Okay. So there's, there's a bunch of math right in here. Yeah. Yeah. And that was on the photo mosaic from 2018. Yeah. Uh, there, there's like a big ring of clam, dead clam chest right yeah. here. There's a little bit of mat down here. Yeah. The we but, didn't look at that. But see, if you go even east of the bacterial mat, there was three little chimneys. Oh, that's how that's that's, all out here. We, have, we haven't seen anything out there yet. This, but is that the place that you wanted to sample? That is that definitely right? the place I'd like to Yeah, that's yeah. what I was thinking. That's, exactly. That's, that's, yes. that, was, that is what you're. That's a spot that's, that's a target for you. Place I'd like to go. Well, we'll go over a pretty thick bacterial mat right if it's there. still there. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm right here, do you want to drop right down on this, this area and kind of go from right here yeah. up over yeah. your clam bed yeah. bacterial yeah. mat and then to Matterhorn? Yeah. Let's do it. Okay, so we'll put a yeah. marker in here. We'll yeah. drop yeah. it right there. And that's benign landing over there. There's nothing big. Um, nothing so, hot. So, so you said there's some vents here, though? Uh, there's three little chimneys. Those little tiny just, ones. So. Yeah. 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 But it's, it's, you know, the, there's three dead chimneys about a meter high, okay. just north of that bump. 
that bottle is just all two pumps. So, so you're thinking somewhere up in here then? Uh, just a little, little just right about there. Okay. Okay. Uh, but this is just sort of pumping two pumps. Oh, just so is this. I think I remember this now, yeah. Yes. It was really small. Like yes. Small. Very small. Yeah. yeah. There was one patch that was just bare ground venting. It was just carpeted with gastropods. Okay. And that one is at about, if I remember, either right about there or right about there. Or okay. somewhere on that. Yeah. But. So we'll just target, because this is a, about, what is that, 20 meter squared area, so we'll just be happy to pop into that area first and start there. That would be great. And yeah. then your, where, where was your stuff? You said there was some uh, matting up here? There's in between, do, yeah. Do so these. if we if we start there and then Straight up and in it, I think we'll, we'll hit it first. Yeah. yeah. Was it just those little white patches, Matt, that yes. we saw? Yeah. Except you're trying to work there? Yeah, just pretty small patches, yes. Yeah, we mm -hmm. might have to look back in the, uh, I think the mark the Maybe it's changed because in the photo mosaic it was significant. Well, we haven't seen it yet. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen this. Yeah. Well, this improves. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, hello everyone. This is uh, Victoria Orphan from Caltech and welcome to leg three. This is the final leg of our exploration of the Pescadero Basin region. Uh, we are heading to the Alca vent field. We have uh, sitting here our fantastic pilots <laughs> and uh, Dr. Z, who many of you may be familiar with, uh, in the back, he's our, our resident geochemist, uh, as well as a number of people from um, Caltech. So students and uh, senior research associates, Rebecca Wiffler, Sergio Parra, John Magyar, uh, Shauna Gofredi from Occidental College, Greg Rouse from UC uh, SD, Scripps Institution of Oceanography, uh, and Manette Pena, Venus, who is uh, another student who is uh, visiting us as well and working on the microbiology. So we're very excited to be on board today and to uh, start to transition from understanding more of the, the geological and geochemical uh, conditions within the Alka vent field and the Yakmat uh, systems to understanding more of the microbiology and biology uh, that is uh, interacting with changing geochemistry at these spectacular uh, vents. So we're about uh, 500 meters off of our vent site now and we will be starting our dive at a wonderful vent that's called the Matterhorn. And we are interested in looking at this system because it has uh, potentially some unusual geochemistry relative to the rest of the vent field. And we know this uh, based on some of the uh, rocks that we collected from this site uh, in the past. And uh, so we're very interested in getting this material. Uh, Z is going to try to collect some pristine water samples using a gas tight sampler and uh, major samplers and then we'll be collecting some uh, rocks and sediment cores from the vicinity to better understand how the communities are responding to uh, the chemistry in these environments. So stay tuned, we'll be on the bottom soon. Here's the mat I was talking about. So this was, so it's pretty, I don't know, is, do we consider that small? So the, here's the little chimneys. Yep. This is the Matterhorn. So if you go that far, it seems kind of big. Yeah, that, that, that's the spot that's neat. Interesting. Okay, that has cool. some unusual mm -hmm. And these little, well. when John spun this around, um, there was like these three little chimlets. I think, is it inactive though? Or, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's low, it's definitely mm -hmm. lower activity. Um, yeah. But we'll, we'll see what it looks like. Somebody saying hi to you, Ron. Haha, cat. Hello, cat. 
Z, can you remind us what was the temperature change of Matterhorn? So 60 was the first? 60 was the geometric. Yeah. And then? Then I think 87. That's my memory. Yeah. In 2017, uh, 111 from here. Yep. 2018. Yep. And uh, 187. 187. Two days ago, three days ago. Okay. Whatever it was. Okay. So I think we can solve it, but I can't solve it right now. Um, but there's a static photo mosaic that I just sent to the iPad. Yeah. And I have it on the laptop. We have it. Um, You're talking about Deep Sea? No. But, um, but Deep Sea will work too because it has the underlay. Yeah. Although we can we can kind of, we can go off of the, the map, the back of the maps. Well, John can flip between the photo mosaic and the map if he just does. No, he doesn't have the photo mosaic. Yeah, does he? Yeah, he does. He does. He does. Oh, I've seen it. Do. Mm -hmm. They did it last night. Oh, last night. Uh, yeah, great. No, they all said that. Fantastic. Yeah, thanks. Great. Yeah. Thanks, great. The version of the photo that's on the iPad yeah. is the full resolution version, mm -hmm. so you'll be able to zoom in more okay. than you can in deep sea. Okay. It doesn't have samples. Right here. Yeah. 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 So he can oh, yes. So that's a matter. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Matterhorn. Great. So you can see you right now where we're going to uh, be starting the dive. We're going to try to target these small features that are just to the um, southeast of the Matterhorn that you can see off to your left there. And we're spinning it around. And this sort of dusting of white that you see in these images here are based on uh, photo mosaics that were taken in 2018. And that's showing the extent of microbial mats. So these are uh, complex communities that uh, are large filamentous bacteria that uh, we presume are feeding off of hydrogen sulfide that is diffusing from below. So they provide a really uh, wonderful sort of indicator of where hydrothermal fluid and these reduced gases and, and, uh, and chemicals are reaching the seabed. And these are areas that we want to target to look more closely at the, the microbiology and how they're influencing the, the chemistry uh, with their metabolism. Isn't that cool? It's, it's amazing, yeah. This, like what he's spinning around. Yeah. Exactly Just draped over, yeah. over the right. bathymetry. It's really helpful. So you might notice in these images here that a lot of the microbial mat seems to be localized to these uh, seafloor uh, topographic highs. And so these are likely underlain by uh, hydrothermal mineral deposits, uh, which may make it a little challenging for us to t collect push cores. We'll, we'll test it out. Um, but uh, we see that they are exquisitely sort of lining the, the outsides of these uh, boundaries of these features. Target depth? Target depth is uh, 36, a little over 36. 36. Okay. 50, 60, nearly there. Let's see here. the order. That's really cool, John. Yeah. Yeah.
we're just looking at the order of operations here that you have written down. So order. Try you're shooting for this. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Two and a half hour descent. Yeah. It's deep here. It's deep. Deep deeper than we're you you know used to in well, last couple of last couple of, couple of expeditions. We've <laughs> <laughs> had two cappuccinos and we well went to caffeinated by the seafloor. Oh yeah. <laughs> so that mm -hmm. to the left is there bacteria. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. But spreading. Your yeah. rock sample? Oh, sorry. Are you are you going for like samples around here, yeah. or um, some near the top? Oh, and in the top. In the middle, and then at the base. At the base. Okay. Yeah. So John is at the maps you guys did last night that you're showing. Uh, a little bit, yeah. So yeah. there is the new data center as well. Great. So you'll see on the screen now, this is uh, multi-beam data that was collected by the ship. So when we're not doing these active dives, uh, we have the capability of doing additional mapping of, of these basins. And so what you're seeing here is a concerted effort that's been going on since uh, 2018 to try to, to capture uh, the full extent of the topography of the seafloor. Uh, in in this region. So not only Pescadero Basin, but some of the basins that are further to the north in the Gulf of California, the Farallon Basin and the Carmen Basin. And so we're, we filled in some of those gaps last night. And uh, so the ship is always working for us to, to collect data that will help future science missions. And so what you're seeing here is the overlay of the photo mosaic. That's that kind of uh, brownish uh, piece there. And you can see, again, the extent of microbial mats that are showing up in white. Uh, just to give you a, a sense of things, that was a um, captured with a, a, a multi-day expedition. So we're, we're going in at different uh, levels of spatial detail um, trying to understand uh, these ecosystems. So from the basin scale now to mapping individual vent fields, uh, looking at the distribution of the animal communities, the, the microbial communities, uh, and uh, expressions of, of active hydrothermal venting uh, within this, this field here. And so our whole dive today is going to be spent at just one chimney within this uh, vent field uh, that we call ALCA.
So I see there was a question about the dive time here. So we've just started leg three. Uh, this is focused on the microbiology and biology. And uh, this leg, we're going to start a couple hours early. So sub gets in the water uh, at about 6.30 uh, uh, central time in uh, the States. And we'll pull off of the bottom around 2 or 2.30 p.m. each day, and we've shifted to a little bit of an earlier schedule uh, in order to give us enough time uh, into the evening to, to process all of the samples that we're, we're collecting. So unlike the, uh, the team that was on Lake 2, where a lot of the data they were collecting uh, was on the seafloor or, or computationally going to be analyzed uh, when they get back to shore, uh, for us, we have a short time window to process all of our live animal and, and microbiology samples and so usually this takes us late into the evening uh, and so we wanted to get an early jump on the dive and that gives us time to process and hopefully get a little sleep in between. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. That's a little clump of two worms, and that's a bigger clump of two worms. Yeah. All right, getting 
close. Yeah. Woo. I told them we were going to make it the sleep challenge for the scientists. Yeah, that's right. Oh. Did you see the exercise challenge? Yeah. I thought we should have a sleep challenge. I, to sleep I one thought only to, to be fair, get more we should, we four hours have, of sleep. Yeah, how many, how many hours? How many are? collective hours of sleep we get? Started five uh, K and continue. Uh, <laughs> It's definitely not how that works, but that should be the goal. I think those mm -hmm. are all the possible things that Cans. John can do oh, yeah. Yeah. to overlay. If you have okay. any interest, I can't even see them. Yeah, I know. You also know that you always have this too, if you need it. Yeah, I will. I'll, I'll definitely use it. Because you can zoom in. Yeah. John, so this is high res. Yeah. If you want it? Yeah. High resolution, so you can yeah. always maybe more than what we can see over there. Do you need the stylus? So we're um, gonna go yeah. over this spot. But when, real, um, within this dive plan, wh how does that fit in? It's, it's not, we were, um, instead of landing at Matterhorn, yeah. we were going to land to the east and just yeah. check out this feature and then drive into Matterhorn just so we can get it. We're just going to look feel for, for, for I, I will, uh, yeah. You'll refrain. I will refrain <laughs> from sampling right away. That's really the yes. secret. Yes. That's <laughs> <laughs> the under, uh, what is it, what's it called? Uh, subliminal? That's the subliminal I, I, question. I, I, I hear what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. <laughs> I heard what you were vibing. Okay, so just yeah. a look see. We'll take a look, and then we'll, that'll give us a sense of what we want to do. But I think we'll sample here and then out near these mat on day three. features on the third day. Yeah. Okay. So just to take a peek. Yeah. All right. All right. So all this, these four goals are happening right at the... At Matterhorn, yeah. Okay. So this is a pre-goal pre one. <laughs> <laughs> You're hitting our pre-goals? Yeah. Okay. Overachiever. Those seem itty-bitty. But clams? Are these, these are all clams? Or, I don't two know, worms. I think he was saying that no. there's two worms all around. Um, oh, a short, a short structure. Yeah, it's really. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was an yeah. yeah. Here. I think they're pixels. Pixels look like clams. I think these are all two worms. Yeah, yeah for sure, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so it's a little short, little. This yeah. actually would be a good place for the 3D mosaic. Because yeah. it's bound to be short, it's true. and you can go that's all true. you can fly over it. Yeah. So yeah. photogrammetry, yeah, but I don't great. know if we have time today to do that. But certainly on day three, well, these chimneys would be fun. But maybe Adam, were you? Did have you, you fly with Greg in July and do three D mosaic reconstruction? I wasn't here for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. But this guy was. This guy, yeah. Chris. I was. <laughs> do you kind of have a? Do you have a pilot protocol? We could just say, here's a feature we want to. 
do a 3D map Usually of? what we would do is we would do certain navigation both directions. Yeah. And then over the top? Over the top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, over the top. And just consistent speed all the way around. Okay. And yeah. then you can process the HD <coughs> right yeah. into your software to build a 3D map. Yeah. We've done that before. Great. Okay. Yes. If it's taller, we would do a uh, certain navigation and a uh, second one higher up. Yeah. I see the bottom. It bottom. Cool. All right. <laughs> Landed right on some map. Nearly on bottom. Thirty-six The doormat. The doormat. You asked. You asked. Here we are at the doormat. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Position is pretty accurate. I think that's exactly where we are. So yeah. This, uh, oh, yeah. Okay. That looks right. Great. So, do you want to drive? Do you want to drive down? Yeah. I'd love to see Okay. Oh, well, here's. Yeah, here's all the two. Yeah. Ooh, this is nice. There's some tube worms. It does look familiar for, for sure. Amazing. It's incredible. So you can see now um, we have our photo mosaic that was collected. Oh, Sorry. we had a photo mosaic that was collected in 2018. Uh, and we're basically looking at that feature. So you can see uh, the little model of Sebastian. And uh, we just wanted to, to take a look and see oh, what is happening. What hap what's, oh, you're white balancing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not touching it. I'm not touching it. Oh, yeah, so you just get set up. I'm like, I was, I was, I'm like, I, Stop. Mayday, Mayday. <laughs> All right, so we're doing a little white balancing here so we can get more accurate um, color representation in the video. There's always tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Looks like there's some clams in there. Or at least some clam hash. All right. Let me know when I can take the camera. I don't want to. Sure. Yeah. Um, give me just all the yeah. No problem. Awesome. Okay, so there's a few siphons. Um, maybe a l just uh, it, it seems pretty good actually. Let's um, yeah. So it looks like there's some live clams in here, Shauna. Uh, let me take a look. You saw some? Yeah. There's some, there's some you can see the siphons and yeah. a few pretty low density yeah. low activity area though yeah um, lots of them with anemones attached to the tops so Ooh, fish little zoarcid zoarcid party maybe not are they zoarcids oh you know we have fish experts around here wow no. think so wonder what they're doing there group. Got, yeah, they've got to be. Yeah. They look like. Do you have fish? Do you have fish a lot there? Yeah. 
I did get rid of the fish button. It's under. <laughs> <laughs> you put. Just to throw you all off. Uh huh. I didn't think we needed a button just for fish. Right? Yeah. Never. All right, so now we're getting into a little bit of the hydrothermal area. Yeah. Unidopsid, there's some crabs. What's the, uh, yeah, this is a nice little feature. That's a pretty nice site. Did you see anemones? I was turning uh, back. Turn there, back. Not as many. No. Some little fish tucked in there. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's one up there. Oh yeah, Wait. I see him. Yep. Oh, so many anemones. Great. Yeah. So we could come back here to sure. sample if you want to. Well, we'll see what Matterhorn looks like. But for the incubation experiments, like anemones on two worms, is perfect because they, they come up in much better condition. All right, so these two worms are Oasisia, and they have sulfur oxidizing symbionts in a special uh, appendage called the trophosome that's inside the, the interior of the worm. So instead of having a gut, they've got a big sack of bacteria that feed off of the hydrogen sulfide in the water. And we have one of the uh, world's experts in these uh, types of chemosynthetic or chemical-based symbioses here on board. This is Shauna Gofredi from Occidental College, and she'll be uh, narrating a little bit later today. So we're over uh, to the east, a little bit southeast of the Matterhorn vent that we're going to um, be visiting a little bit later in the dive. Uh, we haven't been to this site yet uh, on this cruise. Last time we were here was in 2018, so we're interested to see how the seafloor features have changed over this uh, period of time. This looks really great. It's amazing. It's yeah. a wonderland over here. Yeah. It's much bigger than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Look at them all. Can we iris or do you Yeah, it's a little iris? bit. Um, <laughs> Can you give us control? Yeah. How do we should now the brightness? Yeah. It's not uh responding. It's an auto. Unclick auto? Auto? Auto manual? Try it now. Try it now. It's, gonna, it's the bright quite a bit, yeah. Oh. There you go. Really? Something happened? I think they got it You got it in? We do. Mm -hmm. I don't know. If not, we can do it manually from our side. Okay. Well, we'd love to be oh, able look. to control it. Yep. A little, a little bit of shimmering. A little flow here on the left as well. Flow, yeah. Nice. Can we get a frame grab of that? Yeah, oh, yeah you are. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right, Victoria, if you just kind of crank on it, maybe like. Keep cranking. Turns. Yeah. Other way. Maybe that's the other way. <laughs> backseat drivers. Victoria has three backseat drivers here. Uh, I'm turning. And nothing's happening. <laughs> it's reminding me like the temperature control in my office, which I think is just a dummy. It doesn't doesn't actually ever change the temperature. <laughs> just, just to make me feel good. Okay, so uh, east. Oh wait, wait, something changed. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I sure. see it. And yep. The mats are. Yep. There's some mat. At the, it looks like a little baby Matterhorn in. in in progress. 
Pretty awesome. For sure, this is, you see all this, that's yeah. going to be where your yeah. hottest water is. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Look at all your anemones. Yeah, I know. And they're perfect on tube worms for the incubation. So it's yeah. going to slide right off on those tubes. Yeah. Yeah, nice, some farms. nice microbial mat. Yeah, you can see that coating the. That's the hottest. That's the maiden flow right there, huh? Yeah. And you can see all of the flocks of microbial mat that's uh, being lifted up into the water column there. That's all that white material. Yes, please. Yeah, that would be great, Adam. Thanks. I'm also kind of looking for places that we might want to take push cores in the future. Not. Uh, okay. All right. So how about like this this section in the middle here? It might be good to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Because we'll come back. We'll call this feature something. Okay. Like Mark, yeah, okay. All right, great. What do you want to call it? Southeast of Matterhorn? Or, or do you want to give it a... Oh, look at him. <laughs> Can we zoom in a little bit? Yeah, so we think uh, that these are two different colors oops. of the same morph. It's fine. Of the we same can, morphotype? Yeah, we can stop. Same species, we stop and get different some, colors. Except yeah. for the anemone that has like the bumpy red column. So this one is different. Yeah, but those two, two are supposed to... So that's a really nice up? shot. Oop, yeah. whoop. Hold on. Going up. Going over. Oh, yes. Yeah. There we go. Okay. You can talk um, Talk about the anemone. Yeah. Beauty. Look at them all. So you think this uh, this lighter colored one it's off different. to the left is a different species? Mm -hmm. And you can see all the Dorval Aids on the... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, on the tube worms and a little isopod. Yeah. Pretty amazing. Uh, yep. This is very unusual for anemones to be in vigorous flow. Yeah. Thrust. Okay. Back up. Back up. Okay. We're. That's an incredible. Okay. Yeah. So much diversity in there. On the tubes, they're adorable. Uh, yeah, and look at this. There's a lot of microbial mat yeah. and, and, and anemones there. That's that would be a good shot too. They just act like no other anemone on earth. Yeah, they are happy to be in vigorous it's, 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 it's the awkward be staying behind you for ten minutes while you're finishing something up. <laughs> Maybe we can we can move on from anemones. All right. Yeah. They're just so unusual. And Victoria's worm. And, <laughs> yes, the charismatic blue scale worms. I mean, here's the, uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 So, Greg, we decided this could be a, a few of these structures could be. Look, you can see the color change in the plumes. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yep. Well, they're pulled in a little bit there. No, yeah, at the top? Yeah, they get a little orangey. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. 
A little hypoxic. Hypoxic. I went back and looked at that video, and they turn almost yellow when they're wow. deprived of full oxygen. Mm -hmm. Completely yep. fully deprived, they turn yellow. So, we make it our way. So did I hear you guys so were interested in... Full 360 or back work. That is just gonna Fantastic. Okay. Yeah, so the question is, yeah. if we're second on your list, would you rather have us do it now here, or you want to go to that? Well, it de depends. Are you going to want to sample at Matterhorn? We're going to come back here on the third dive, mm -hmm. so whether or not we want to just do it... Mm -hmm. like if, yeah. But they're perfect when yep. they're on the worms. Yeah. So we're going to do a little sampling so I'll give here. You this. This is the, uh, so the poker. So you see some, just show me where you're looking. You, you. So let's zoom in. And uh, can you sit down here? So what's uh, directly underneath us? Is it the mat? <laughs>
Uh -oh. oh yeah, it's look at all of that microbial mat coming off. Can we can we get that um, on film on yeah. film sure. on camera? Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Carl, can we videotape the down facing camera? Look at that. Oh never mind. This is fine. That is a true yeah, snowblower. <laughs> So that is all presumably microbial biomass. It's white in yeah. So there's there's some uh, advective flow, hydrothermal fluid coming out, and it's basically releasing all of that. Could be some sulfur. Yeah. Too. That is incredible. And that was from us sitting down on the seafloor. Yeah, I think we just we rearranged just, the plumbing a little. Yep, yeah. sprung a leak. <laughs> I see Randy Driscoll on the YouTube feed. Randy, oh. Skyler, science lesson for the day. That's right. Randy, you want to write a song about <laughs> our tube worms? He does. Okay, are we set up? So what did you say about some snips? Yeah, so I'm gonna follow him over here and we can, uh, Okay. Do you, do you grab your pointer there? Yeah. And show us which one you're looking at. You said the right hand? Yeah. I mean, this clump is also great too, but you probably can't reach it, yeah. Okay. Do you see that one? No. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, just somewhere in there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Perfect. Uh, maybe just right here, there's a, oh yeah. Because you want the anemones and the worms. Exactly, both. Yes, please. So from the most basal part, if you're going to, you can also pull and they'll come loose. I, I, <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, the foam fingers are new. That, that is soft touch. Okay, so we're collecting uh, some tube worms and the anemones that are attached to the tube worms. Afterwards, if we can get a nice zoom up there, this is marine yeah. species. The little... Are they not a different type of oasisia, or is it not a... No, no, on the tubes. Oh, on the tubes. The spaghetti stuff? Yes. It's a oh, new polygon. No kidding. Oh, cool. All right. We're getting a bunch already. Nice. Yeah, yeah. All right. Can you um, turn it around so that an enemy is going first? That's like true. target that's those because that's, okay. that's the those are the important. And the two big ones. That you 
Remember, we also have the uh, the milk crate there. We can store rocks in there. Yeah, we like. No, we need we, we, like them. Them. we need the microbes okay. on the yeah. This big, so yeah, I don't think so. They're not great unless they're small rocks. Yeah, unless they're unless it's friable material. They will might be friable. Yeah, I don't know. If you uh, you're on the water yeah. if but if you drop um, it, will it, will the one with the anemone go in? Yeah, I mean, can you can you let it go? It's okay if they're sticking out, but I don't want them to. There you go. That that one you could take it. Did that even have an anemone on it? That one? Oh, to shove it, to shove it down, yeah. <laughs> the one in the back. Will it close with the... We decided if the ends of the worms are sticking out, it'll be okay. Fancy manipulating you got going on there. Yeah. You, you, would, you would pick the most bushy tangle to. <laughs> It's 
Yeah. So, Victoria, if we do one more grab and we put it in the bio box, does that mess up your samples? Do you not want animal tubes with your carbonates? Um, do you want them discreet? It, it would be it would be mm -hmm. nicer, mm -hmm. but whether or not we can put most of them on uh, one side of the divider, you might mess I, don't know. Them, I am worried. There's a lot of bacterial flock and stuff. Yeah, yeah. it's gonna. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we will we will come back here though, yeah, yeah, so we could get. I think there were four. Yeah. Um, so you can. The other, we can be done with this. the other option is if they do have the the cutters, the they the could hold one. it with a manip and then cut and then maybe put this them in. Like do, hmm? This one has a cutter. So they they said that they could yeah. cut at the base and then make them shorter and put them in, but then they'll be. So we'll try yeah. I don't know if they cut these tubes. Right. Let's let's try for. Um, Less of a deep one now, and then we'll just do one more in the middle. That's the one. Or no, you want me to stop? No, yeah. that's fine. Yeah, you just feel the time pressure from the I know. radiator. I know, yeah. I'm sorry, so you want to keep it tight. Okay. I mean, we need to get. Um, yeah, let's just, I feel, let's just let's let's I feel like we should get the push cores from here because. Oh. Well, because otherwise, we're going to go to Matterhorn, we're going to get the rocks, then we have to go off site to get push cores. Why don't you let Greg get in and slurp real quick? Yeah. Oh, this can be done. Let's just, let's, I think I got like five OSCC and four anemones. It's okay for incubation. Are you, you just <laughs> slurp? <laughs> That's true. Sometimes the tubes come yeah. in. Okay. You should tell the anatomy story. Yeah, I will. Why is the anatomy cool? Yeah. yeah, I will. Okay. Yeah, I'm not telling your story. Yet. <laughs> you, you tell your story. Tell my story. Um, okay. You wanna? Um, do you wanna? Do you wanna take the driver's seat to do the surfing? Sure. Or? Unless Greg, do you want to? Thanks, Adam. That's great. I think we're gonna we're gonna slurp now. Okay. Mm -hmm. We'll just uh, go ahead and take this one off so we're ready. Oh, sure. One, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. No, we're just going to have them open. A close up? Yeah. <laughs> All right. I think they're good, yeah. Okay, so we just collected some anemones there, and it was a discovery that we made in 2018. Just a second. Are you do you are you taking camera control? Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. No, that's fine. Yeah. He's got camera control. Um, so we discovered that these anemones were acting very unusual compared to other anemones, in that they were positioning themselves in the most vigorous hot venting fluids, which is kind of uh, unusual. And uh, we discovered that the reason why they're doing that is that they have sulfide oxidizing bacteria living in their tentacles, that we believe provide nutrition for them. And so that was the, the first cnidarian to uh, be discovered that relies on symbionts, chemosynthetic, that is uh, using chemical energy rather than energy from the sun to um, produce nutrition for them. So this was quite a, an amazing discovery. And the same is true for the oasisia. We've known for vesti about vestimentiferans for a long time that they rely on symbionts but uh, not cnidarians. Okay, so you. okay, can I have, how about focus? So the autofocus looks, yeah. is it just the shimmering water? Yeah. Okay, Greg, where do you wanna, do you see Greg's pointing to over here? We're gonna take a frame grab and then we'll sample animals. 
Zoom in. Mm -hmm. So we're about to. Oh, oh, sorry. We're about to collect animals. So this green one is a different species as well. Do you see the green one behind the red? Uh, the behind the white anemone? Different. Well, we don't know yet. Um, so we're about to sample by uh, deep sea vacuum, essentially. So we have an expert on board that studies all of these little invertebrates in this environment. And so in order to get those, we have to uh, slurp, call the slurp, even closer, closer, closer. Okay, that's as zoomed in as I get. We just want a nice image of the worms around the base, the tip of the tube. Okay, so these um, red-headed worms that you see are called oasisia, and they just, they get nervous about uh, any water vibrations. You see a uh, purple scale worm, bluish scale worm, named after our chief scientist, Victoria Orphan. And then you also see all of these little yellowish polychaetes around the tubes of the Oasisia, and those are called Dorvaleids. And that's a new species, and it's going to be named for my PhD student, Marina McCowan, who's nice. doing her PhD on Vestimentifera, which includes this Oasisia group. So. This one's for you, Marina. <laughs> All right, we are. Let's commence. Commence slurping. So you want to slurp the Well, the base, so we're trying to get animals in. in down the inside, though? Mm-hmm. Okay. And they'll start to swim out. And... So you want to bring it like, into? At, uh -huh, into the base, sure. And slurping. jiggle. Okay. Just kind of di disrupt them so they'll okay. swim out. Sorry, do you want me to zoom in? Oh, sorry. Oop, wrong way. I got to get used to the camera. Okay. Warp That's, speed. Um, sperm packages. Oh, so these worms. No, from the dorval. No, from, no, from the dorval. Okay. But these things are sperm packages. So oh, Oasisia males release packages of sperm that are taken in by the females, and they're constantly streaming out these sperm packages for the females because they have internal fertilization. So if each yeah, of these, those amazing. little threads are either poop of the Dorvalaids, yep, or you get these little packages of sperm. There we go, a lesson, lesson on, uh, okay, did you hear that? A, a lesson on, <laughs> you know, it always comes back to poop. All right. Poop or sex. <laughs> or reproduction. All right, we're ready. Let's do it. Jared is going to, I'm going to zoom out here. All right. Do we know um, which canister we're on? We should be able to see that, right? We're on canister one, and that has the, not the thick, the wide mesh, but the thin. Yeah, the only one that has wide is, is the flush, and that's eight. Eight. Okay. So canister one. Yeah. This makes me nervous. Is this supposed to be that taut? All right, getting set up here. This takes a, a bit of time to strategize. Do you have the camera again? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. All right, so let's see what we get. Yeah. And then just go straight in here. Just anywhere straight ahead. Uh, yeah, and you know, yeah, just as deep into the into the the tube worms as possible. Uh, can you go? He are you heading to the left here? Yeah, straight. Yeah, you got it. You got it. Straight in. In there. Yes. Deeper. Okay. And then wiggling. Um, do you control the yeah. suction? Okay. Yeah, great. Okay. So we're also watching the canister fill as they suction. And you can, yeah, move it around a little bit and um, we'll see animals come into the jar. Do you want to index, you want to take two jars here? Just, yeah, okay. 
Two. The anemones went into two. Okay. Yeah, let's see. I do see animals in the in the container. I think. You can also, if you get two worms, that's also fine. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, Jared, can you go a little higher where we uh, we originally imaged that little clump right behind the, the schnoz? Yeah. Keep going up a little bit higher. Up, or can you? The bungee won't. Mm. Okay. No, don't worry about it then. Here is fine. How about how about can you reach these white anemones over here and and that? Okay. Okay. I maybe bump forward a little bit. I think that would be good. Okay. Um. Yeah, I see. I don't know where the green one went. Okay. We get a grab. Oh, that's so good. These are grazing on bacteria normally, and we're curious why there's so many around these tubes. But they may just be eating the constantly growing bacteria all over the tubes. They have little jaws, that's the black speck you can see inside their head that allows them to basically mow the lawn of the bacteria. Okay, that's great. Okay. Um, yeah, any, it's fine, Jared, wherever you can reach. Let me get this monkey fish that I have. Uh, I'm sorry, did you index to canister two? No. I think let's do that. John, we're doing canister two now. Thank you. All right, let's see. I'm going to, I don't know if I can zoom in a little. Okay. Go ahead. Is that all right? Or you want shallower? Oh, is that okay. Okay, that's good. Okay. Mystery buckets. This is always uh, exciting when we get these samples back on board because we have no idea what we collected. Oh yeah, if you could dislodge those tube worms they might come through with some anemones on them unless you're worried they might get stuck in the tube yeah they are yeah if you kind of just jiggle at the base they might come free Jared yeah mm -hmm. haven't seen it. there's one some are coming in to the canister. So I should mention there's a snail there. Is that a snail? Pravana? Here at the top of the tube worm? There? It's not a Pravana. Is it so, something you want? You don't think? Is that a different snail? So do you see? I'm sure this is tricky, Jared. Do you see, there's a brown snail here that's kind of unfamiliar to both of us. Do you want my stick? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You can also index. You can index again if you need to. It might be. Sure. Go ahead and index. I think we've gotten a lot in there. And it's right above the monkey fist of. So I should mention to those of you on YouTube that this site is quite unusual in that it has quite a number of new species new to science, and that even if these animals are previously known from other vents, they're not found at the regional vents nearby. So this is a, a pretty unusual assemblage of a, a limited fauna compared to other sites south of us and north of us, uh, which makes it very interesting, and it probably has something to do with the geochemistry that is driving these um, vents, and we'll, we'll leave it up to our geologist, geobiologist, and geochemist to tell you more about that, but from a biological perspective, it's quite a unique habitat here. Okay, we indexed canister three, and we're going after this 
little snail here. Mm -hmm. And then just down a little bit. I don't have they, Adam likes to have control here. Let's see if we can get this little brown snail. You know, when it's um, when Greg Rouse doesn't uh, isn't familiar with it, you know it's new. <laughs> sometimes they get away. Sometimes they. Oh, look at that amazing sampling. That little. It's gonna. It's yeah. got. Yeah, you got it. Okay, so we'll just. That's nice. Actually, I don't think. I think we're still in canister too. Is that all right? It's fine. So just the sample nice loggers. Okay. Yeah, that's Thank totally you. fine. I think that might. Is that the snail? Yes. No thanks. Yeah, that was the initial. No, no, yeah. Uh, so there's. I know you wanted to catch it. So we also try to collect as few animals as possible, and we've already. That's Victoria's one. We'll, we're we're pretty. Yeah, we'll, we'll get some anyway. Sure though. about those worms. Uh, I actually, what happened was when we did the sediment part two, dumped up, and I think it went the wrong way. So that is actually, I believe, one. So it's in one, not two. It's in one. It's in three, you know. Do we have anything in two? Yes, the second sample. Oh, second. it went back. Oh, and then that's yeah. fine. That's yeah, fine. Yeah, what happened was, you see yeah. all the sediment in there? Yep. So we kind of leaked all the top and killed our business. Like, no problem, no problem. Yeah, so we have samples in one and two then. So no, nope. yeah. Okay. Are we one and two? Yeah.
All right, so we're going to do some high temperature probe measurements in that uh, diffuse flow that we saw with lots of uh, bacterial mat flock that was coming out. We had a nice sample collection using the slurp sampler a little bit ago. Uh, this allows us to capture some of the smaller organisms that may be not as apparent um, from the video that we can uh, capture that are living within these tube worms. This is a whole ecosystem and a lot of diversity of small invertebrates that are found uh, within those tube worm clumps. Yeah, we'll sieve out the contents of the slope canisters tonight over a mesh sieve and then sort on the, the, the remains in a dish of cold water under a microscope and a lot of the animals we'll be looking at are only a millimeter or two long and we try and find multiple specimens of those uh, for further photography in the lab so we love the camera system here but a lot of the animals we get are too small to even see with this camera so we end up photographing them live tonight And Greg is an absolutely fantastic photographer. He has some of the, the best macro images of these organisms. Uh, so it's a real you know, treat to be out here with him. We learn so much as microbiologists about the, the animal communities. And really, uh, one of the, the best parts of these types of cruises is how interdisciplinary they are. We can have uh, people who have expertise in the, the geochemistry, the geology, and uh, the animal communities, and of course the, the microbiology that we've been focusing on. We're ready. Let's, uh, yep, take the camera, and then if we can just position it in that shimmering water. Pokey pokey. Oh yeah, that's perfect. That's Actually, one yeah, that's the one yeah, because of the processing later. Today, it's today like, is yeah. okay. Um, well, I think we can get the cold I just wanted to just to write one thing. But we could also just have a note. Yeah. Well, for now, I want to be doing the notes because I'm supposed to be doing a follow up. Do you want me to switch to this? I'm happy to do this part now. No, we're gonna call it Wonderland. Wonderland. It's Wonderland. <laughs> I love it. I love it so. I'm living. <laughs> because I, I worry that the three chimneys actually might be inactive, and then we're like, chimneys always look like active thing. We don't have to get over there yet. Three chimneys can be its own site because it's still another 30 meters, 20 meters. They are inactive.
we took before? Yeah, it's on there somewhere. It's just in the PDF. Yeah, it's the thing in Acrobat. 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 Yeah, it